Welcome to this week's special edition of the Swedish Startup Session. I'm here with Tyler Crowley, uh, founder of Squeal and co-host of This Week in Startups, my absolute favorite web show. Uh, we're going to talk about Squeal. We're going to talk about new advertising models which are used on This Week in Startups. Yep. And we're going to talk a lot about the Swedish startup community and the global startup community. So stay tuned. This is Sweden. You ain't packing gas, you ain't hard, you ain't living in the garage. This is Sweden. Fly overseas, clear use a G. Please believe this ain't Sweden. Witness a massacre in Middle East to Africa. Bet you'll be thanking God. This is Sweden. Stop lying to all, you ain't struggling at all. This is Sweden. You ain't packing gas, you ain't hard, you ain't living in the garage. This is Sweden. Fly overseas, claim use a G, please believe this ain't Sweden. Witness a massacre in Middle East to Africa, bet you be thanking God. This is this is the Swedish Startup Session. So, welcome back to the Swedish Startup Session, the special with Tyler Crowley, co-host of this week in startups, right. my actually favorite show. Oh, of, really? Yeah, it is. Oh, very kind. Yeah, I, I'm. St Funny you say this. Last yesterday. Yeah. Yesterday afternoon, I was sitting in Stuart Plan, Stuart Plan, uh, in front of the uh, espresso house. Yeah. With the, the chairs, I'm just sitting there doing email, and two guys come by and say, "Are you Tyler Crowley?" I, the guy, he goes, "We're huge fans of your show. Can we <laughs> buy you a drink?" So. We ended up going over to Burns and spending, yeah. you know, uh, we're partying yeah. until 2 in the morning. Great. Yeah. I'm going to redo your mic, so... Yeah. There. There. Better. Um, so, you're in, you've been in Stockholm quite a lot the last, this summer, actually. Yes. Yeah, so what happened? Uh, what happened was I've had a, a dream for many years to spend summer in Sweden. Yeah. And this was the summer to do it. Although, had I known what the weather was going to be like, it wasn't. It was, technically it wasn't the right. I didn't pick the best. No, I should have picked it last summer. year. Yeah. No, but I'm really glad I did it. Yeah. I think I'll be coming here much, much more, and meeting a lot of incredible people, mm -hmm. and regretting not having come sooner. Actually. So you are not only the co-host of this week in startup, which started when? It's like two years. Yeah, we're on episode 300. It's coming wow. up very soon. Wow! I know, right. We're going to three episodes a week. Yeah. I think eventually we'll get to five. That's the that's yeah. the vision. It's actually Jason's dream to do <laughs> nothing else other than five days a week yeah. of the show. Yeah. Just like he wants to be Howard Stern secretly. Yeah. And um, it's just too fun to do. Yeah. You know, I mean, it's we, Jason and I don't do any of the work really. There's the producers, there's a yeah. team of people yeah. behind the show who do all the work. We just sit down and talk. And talk. Yeah. And and I don't yeah. do I don't do that much talking. He yeah, does all because, the talking. Because I mean that was my my follow up question actually yeah. because you're a startup founder also. Yeah. You have your own company yeah. called Squeal. Yeah. Uh, so how you fit in this into your hectic schedule? You, people ask like you know how do you have time yeah. to do both? I get more work done during this week in startups when I'm sitting there at the laptop. Yeah. I'm working. <laughs> and that's why I don't talk that much on the show. Yeah, yeah. I actually get a lot of work done during the show. People don't know that. Yeah. Like you're listening at home, but if you watch, you see my laptop. Um, I do a lot of email during the show. That's yeah, that's great. Yeah. And I used to, it used to be my nap time. Uh -huh. I that show used to be the moment of the day where I could just unplug and relax and not focus yeah. on anything other than like talking about whatever yeah it was my relaxing kind of daydreamy mode mm -hmm. of the day mm -hmm. and um, yeah it's not it doesn't interfere with my schedule at all because you know we have producers who really yeah. spend all the work on the show so tell me a little about squeal mm. squeal is growing nicely it's uh, just over two years old now yeah and it's a fun simple solution for retailers to communicate directly with their customers through their phones directly rather than on social networks, well, publicly, because a lot of times customers want to communicate yeah. with the store, but the, the the convenient ways to do that today are online, publicly yeah. through Yelp and Twitter and Facebook and everything. Yeah. But wh where's the private way to communicate? Yeah. You know, because a lot of times I want to say this this waiter was a jerk or this yeah. waiter was awesome. But I don't want to say that mm -hmm. publicly. Mm -hmm. So that's where Squeal came in. 
So, because I know it works like like right now, we are yeah. at the lovely Mellar Pavilion. I, by the way, I love this place. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, if I uh, got upset with a waiter here, yeah. I could. Yeah, you could I mean, be like, you're not launched in Europe, but that's. We, what we do have some European clients, yeah. but it's like. Yeah, you could easily just say, you know, whatever you want. Yeah. Them, you know. <laughs> You can say whatever you want to them, and they would get it in real time, and they could and respond in real time, which yeah. on they can't really do on Facebook or on Twitter. No. You know. And and why why don't I sort of call the manager up or email them or Great something? Great question. Yeah. There, I don't know why this is, but there's been sort of a generational change. Mm-hmm. Um, it's the same reason why don't you write letters to grandma anymore? It's you know we're in an age of mm-hmm. texting. You know we're yeah. in an age of instant. You know, and at, at the same time, we've kind of gone away from being confrontational in mm. person. Yeah. Um, and I think our parents would have no problem saying, I need to talk to the manager. Mm. But anyone, you know, the younger kids, yeah. that's, they don't have, they didn't grow up with that. No. They grew up with, you know, texting their best friend who's sitting across mm. the, the, the other side of the room. So um, it's just a different a different age now yeah, where people yeah. don't want to be confrontational yeah I think that one one to get to go back to to this week in startups I yeah. think one thing that really fascinates me with uh, the format is this um, earned advertising yeah that I can't you know say like Jason and Tyler advertise my company right. I have to earn it right. and I think that's a complete shift in the entire advertising yeah. module right so, so where do you see that going? Do you think that that could expand from like geek shows like This Week in, in uh, Startups or This Week in Tech or This Week in Google to other kinds of shows, say New York Times right. or, well, or uh, Vogue or whatever? I mean, my, my answer to that is Jason and myself have no fear of trying new things mm-hmm. you know like we like with the with the with the launch conference and TechCrunch 50 that was a very new concept mm-hmm. and not only you know are we very at ease at trying very new ideas and, and to us it's a, almost a form of marketing to try new ideas yeah. and even with the new idea of having startups come on stage and paying them fifty thousand dollars and not charging them and, and doing mm-hmm. that model constantly evolving the model yeah so that this last year with the launch conference in its fifth year or sixth year now um, how do we uh, keep record of the amount of investments that were done between investors and startups mm-hmm. which totaled over two million dollars during the event yeah and a million before the event they even went on stage yeah like just constantly pushing new ideas which um, seem to resonate and, and not always no. sometimes we get something right and, and the other conferences start wanting to tabulate how much money the startups are earning it's like okay I wonder where you got that idea yeah. so yeah I, I think I think we have a pretty good track record of trying fun new ideas that are just because we get bored easy we yeah. have ADD so it's like let's, well, wouldn't it be wild if yeah. this happened yeah. Yeah. And there's an element yeah. of that because I think it's it's such a powerful model that I trust you. I trust Jason. Right. I've le- gotten to learn to, to know you through the right. shows. Right. And Thanks. For, you, that's a great compliment, by the way. Yeah. yeah. And and uh, I mean, not know know you, but but your your um, uh, your style and, right. and what you like and and your your sense of quality and everything. Right. Right. And then you, when you endorse brands, that really you know adds value instead right. of just you know. Well, I think doing the, the real our, innovation is is making a fool of yourself over MailChimp by, yes. by making a yeah. crazy monkey sound. That, that in and of itself is kind of innovative. Yeah. But, but uh, yeah, you can't act, you can't do that um, without a, a little bit of a passion mm-hmm. for it. Like, I think it's pretty obvious when somebody's pitching something that they don't have mm-hmm. a passion for. And our audience is too savvy yeah. to try and push anything over on mm-hmm. them. And it wouldn't feel right. It wouldn't be worth it. Because the show ultimately, in our case, is that we'd do this show for free if there yeah. were no sponsors. So why take on a sponsor that, yeah. you know? But I also think it's interesting when you look at the whole, combine it with the whole social media uh, development that 
brands and companies can't really get away anymore. Right. Uh, they have to deliver great That's right. products and great content. Oh, yeah, yeah, it's exposed instantly. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And this is just, you know, another step that now you can't even advertise without people the, loving your product. You are, yeah, just, you're not advertising ready. No. Because if you do, you're just going to exponentially expose your... What, Failure. Yeah, your, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Your, your weaknesses. Yeah. Yeah, that's a great point. So, um, talking about advertising, um, Facebook had a rather uh, horrible quarterly result. And it was like their first official quarterly result, yeah? Yeah. 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 And uh, also we've seen horrible results from Singa. Yeah. We have seen, um, well, Yahoo is looking up right now, right. but but uh, there's been a rather lot of rather bad reports in, in the the social uh, the, the startup yeah. community. Uh, do you think this will dampen the sort of the, the? But LinkedIn did really well. LinkedIn did really well. Yeah. So business to business, but not consumer right. to business. Right. Right. Do you think that this will will um, dampen the enthusiasm from but the investors? Other, the or? other thing is is yeah, uh, LinkedIn is not really advertising no. based per se. No. Um, yeah, advertising. I think it's it's tricky when you build your business mm. on top of an advertising revenue model because you're beheld to a lot of other variables yeah. in the advertising market, which itself has the yeah. cyclical and things. Yeah. Um, Facebook specifically still has a lot of room left to milk yeah. advertising. I mean, there, there's no big roadblock banners, the movie premieres. They could do a whole lot of creative stuff. And I'm so surprised that they haven't done anything for businesses. Right. I mean, they're, 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 everybody right. wants Great. to be be uh, on Facebook, right. and, and there's they're just pissing all over businesses. Really. That's right. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and there's a that's a lot of potential revenue in, yeah. the, in that piece alone. You're right. Businesses are crawling over yeah. all over themselves to figure out. How do we really get in, you know and and utilize this? Yeah, and instead they are just doing like rehashing banner ads. That's right, more or less, or yeah. small. Uh, They'll figure it out. Side. They they got yeah. a lot of smart people yeah. there. I I have to think, it's just they've got so many opportunities. Mm -hmm. It's just which one do they want to tackle first? And but do you think that that. Uh, we, we've seen the bad reports, and we've also seen a lot of smart people depart from the top uh, companies. Recently, yeah, yeah, yeah. Recently. So, do you think that now you're almost falling out of the picture? Oh, here. sorry. <laughs> like that. Um, so, do you think that uh, the the enthusiasm from from uh, startup investors mm -hmm. might dampen a bit with when you combine these things, or? It's a good question because what we don't want to have happen is what happened in Web 1.0 when yeah. all these companies IPO and, yeah. and they had no revenue and everything just crashed mm -hmm. and fell apart and Warren Buffett looked like the really smart guy mm -hmm. like told you this was you know, smoke and mirrors. Um, which is weird, right? Because like Zynga really is a business and yeah. Facebook really is a business. Unfortunately, there's, specifically in Silicon Valley, mm -hmm. Just not a huge emphasis on revenue. No. You know? And until they really, you know, take that take those steps to become very revenue minded. And unfortunately, when when social networks do become very revenue minded, it's usually the beginning of the end. Yeah. Um and my and my face had a little bit of that with mm. the big Google deal. So I, I have to think Facebook will survive it um, only because of the, they've got a lot of gravity. But again, those are you, those are very famous last words. Whenever historically companies talk, refer to technology companies as they just have too much momentum, they can never yeah. fail. That's usually the beginning of the yeah. end. Yeah. Yeah. But it feels so weird to say this about yeah. Facebook right now because what else is there? But it, I mean, that's what everyone said about Microsoft and you know, 2000, 2000 yeah. or 98 or yeah. You know. yeah. So, um, have you seen, I mean, what, what's the trend right now when it comes to investing in startups in Silicon Valley? The trend right now is design focus, mm -hmm. which I think bodes really well for Stockholm. Yeah. Because um, there's such a lot of talent coming out of the schools here, yeah. Um, and the startups that I've seen here, and, and Spotify, if nothing else, wins by design. Mm. Uh, it's a UX, it's a yeah. it's a UX UI triumph yeah. more than anything. Yeah. Um, and good on Sweden for yeah. being kind of, you know, you guys are a little overdue for some good karma, <laughs> uh, you know. So hopefully. Um, 
the combination of mobile and design with where Sweden is at, uh, hopefully we get some really good apps mm -hmm. coming out of here real soon. I, I suspect there will be. Yeah. Yeah, because I mean, the Swedish startup scene is, or the Stockholm startup scene, especially, is really hopping right now. Yeah. So, how, how have you exp experienced it? Have you had time uh, yeah. to to? Uh, I've been doing a bunch of meetings, yeah. um, and as I uh, alluded to earlier, like even randomly on the street, mm -hmm. startups will recognize me and say, "Let's go grab a beer," and I mm -hmm. love that. Yeah. Um, and learning about everyone that's here in town, it's a bit fragmented. This mo this yeah. this community, yeah. and this community could. Um, really, in a short amount of time, could grow exponentially just by somewhat unionizing, mm -hmm. to use a, a Swedish word. Yeah. <laughs> um, or United you... Startups yeah. Union, yeah. Yeah, I like it. <laughs> Startup Union, Sil Silicon Unionism or Silicon <laughs> Socialism. Oh my gosh, that would be a great branding. <laughs> Silicon Socialism. Um, yeah, but because you've got people all over Freedom Plan and Gamlestan, and they're they're very spread out. Yeah, I was like, I'd love to see a, a more coherency and people engaging and interacting in an in a organic way and building their community. It's going to happen. Yeah, um, and hopefully it happens before people, the magnet of Berlin and London, get yeah. too strong and and they find a way to create a nest here that's comfortable. But I'm I'm kind of active helping. Uh, the Invest Stockholm group. Kind yeah, because of you have, have a sort of recipe which you've done in right. LA because you're That's not right. in Silicon Valley, you're That's in right. LA. Yeah. Exactly. And, and amazingly, for the startup community in Stockholm, there is an incredible, um, you know, um, synergies between LA and Stockholm yeah. in that we both have these big brother neighbors yeah. who are pulling away our talent. Yeah. Um, and in LA, we had to sit down and strategize. How do we, in a nice way, keep the talent here, and, and if at all possible, attract outside talent here? Yeah. And we've been able to do that, uh, kind of to our own surprise, but it worked <laughs> better than we had hoped for. Um, it's worked incredibly well, and I think it will work incredibly well in Stockholm mm -hmm. as well, once sort of the pieces are put in place. Yeah. So, um, what do you see yourself? going forward with right now mm. are you you actually said that you're thinking of moving to Stockholm I, I, I am suffering from the summer <laughs> and what I love is the, the, you haven't discovered e the winter every yet. <laughs> time the, first, the conversation is always it's nice to meet you how do you like Stockholm I love Stockholm Stockholm's great I could I could live here Yes, but have you been here in the winter? <laughs> and I love the fact that everyone is so forthcoming. Yeah. In the second question about bringing up the winter, and if you know you're not trying to hide the fact that you have this god awful darkness. Um, I was joking with some friends earlier. They should rebrand at the airport. Welcome to the darkness. Like when you <laughs> arrive during the uh, winter. <laughs> um, Silicon darkness. Um, that'd be a great community as well. Um, I'm coming from Southern California where yeah. every day is kind of like today. Yeah. I'm incredibly curious to see what this darkness yeah. is all yeah. about that yeah. I've been hearing about. Yeah. Like it's but I, I, I must say that it, it fosters a, a goddamn uh, work discipline huh. because, I mean, there's no distractions like beach or, right. you know, gar barbecues and garden parties or whatever. Here's the amazing thing is in L.A. because we have gorgeous weather yeah. 365 days a year, it's not a distraction. No. Here you get, you're Crazy. lucky. You're lucky enough to get a week of good weather. Yeah. No one's working. Yeah. The distraction is not the bad weather. It's the good weather. Yeah. yeah. Where we Absolutely. don't, we don't, we don't have that. But um, you do have such bad weather that it, it enables you to focus. Yeah. So it's it's a trade-off. You know, it's like you. Uh, but I still, all in all, I think Stockholm is a great place to do a startup. Mm -hmm. We did on our show the Stockholm versus uh, South Africa. South Africa. Yeah, that was great. That was great, and wow, that was great to see a bunch of smart people in a room. No, it was actually Malmo. It was. Yeah. I mean, uh, some of them were yeah. from here. So uh, Desmo specifically is from yeah. here, which I like a lot. Yeah. Love that company. Um, I think this is this is a good place now. Mm -hmm. And I think it's going to be an even much better place a year from now. Mm -hmm. So it's, yeah, I can say sincerely, I, I could see myself being here. Mm -hmm. And I, there's very few places on earth I can say that about. <laughs> That's nice. Yeah. 
Um, so when, when you look at the, the global yeah. uh, startup scene, yeah. where do you see, because I mean you do these shows yeah. with uh, Berlin versus yeah. London, yeah. South Africa versus uh, South Korea, Stockholm, South Korea yeah, yeah. Chile, yeah. Mexico and yes. so on. So where do you think uh, the, the really growth is, is coming right now? Is it all over or? Well, there's, it's amazing. It's like it, 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 it all it takes is one smart person yeah. in each city. Yeah. At, in the government level, like Chile, mm -hmm. is a really amazing example. Yeah, because I mean, I heard a lot about startup Chile. Right. But it suddenly just yeah. boom. Right. And you know what it is? Is somebody in the government had the idea? <clears throat> we need to have a startup community mm -hmm. here in in Santiago, Chile, and they took a very radical and somewhat oddly genius approach, which is. Let's pay startups from America to relocate yeah. here, yeah. and I was sort of helpful with them getting that that first group of startups down into Santiago. Mm -hmm. And now they've got some 200, 250 startups, mm -hmm. all in one building essentially, yeah. and created this community almost overnight. Mm -hmm. I mean, within six months, and it's really amazing how one savvy government person can say we need to we need to get into this game um, and and for their and for Santiago's cases they want to be the tech hub of South America yeah, yeah. and more importantly they don't want Buenos Aires to be the tech hub of South America mm -hmm. and and that, that's kind of the backstory is <laughs> Buenos Aires was organically starting to become because there's yeah, a lot of good yeah, designers yeah, there yeah. there's actually a Ruby development community yeah, there yeah. and Chile has this little bit of a rivalry, and then, and then they're like, you know, we can't lose this to Buenos Aires. Mm -hmm. No, we can't afford to lose it. And there, it's sort of a motivation by fear of loss yeah. to your neighbor. And, uh, you know, Berlin is getting a little bit of an organic thing going, and London's got its own thing going on. It's like, um, Stockholm needs to get its game together, mm -hmm. you know, just like LA needed to. Yeah. And it worked out really well for us, and we're able to grow to such an extent that we're attracting some of the best investors from Silicon Valley are starting to really relocate yeah. down to LA and, and a lot of startups are consider LA a viable place to do their startup now so but I think what's interesting is that I mean we, we hear a lot about Asia yep uh, it's really fast growing well, well Singapore is doing something amazing yeah. by the way if you're if you get funding from uh, one of the investors who's on the approved list mm -hmm. the government will match you seven dollars to one yeah. on that which is Holy cow! The but I can tell you, we we uh, have a Swedish sort of internet legend yep. that's the running company down there, and he says said to me that uh, there is a completely different thing than doing it in in uh, US or Europe sure. because you have to have a laundry list that's for right. every person because they don't do anything, yep. uh, you know, spontaneously sure. or so on. Sure. So so management is completely different. I'm sure. But it's very interesting. Yeah, um, but it's my my sort of point in all this is is it's interesting to sit back at the fifty thousand yeah. foot level and see which cities are really yeah. passionate about creating a technology ecosystem. Yeah. Yeah. Tel Aviv, it's no joke in Tel Aviv. No. You know, um, they are they are very active about getting their talented startups mm -hmm. over into these states. Yeah. And and by the way, like with the launch conference. Gosh, uh, on an international basis, Tel Aviv makes up the vast majority of the international applications yeah, yeah. we receive and, and start on stage yeah. and winners yeah. of the event. Yeah. Um, and, and we've actually been talking a lot about that in the Swedish community, yeah. like why? Uh, and I mean, yes, you have a closer historical tie between uh, Israel and U.S. Yeah. Uh, Israel in itself is too small to support. It's divide. tiny. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's tiny. Yeah. Small. It's smaller than Sweden. You know. <laughs> yeah, oh yes, it's much smaller yeah. than Sweden. And Sweden is just the right size to, you know, you can have a, like a lifestyle business uh, as a, a, a tech startup. Yeah. Uh, but you won't go anywhere. But yeah. you can survive on it. Yeah. And, and unfortunately, a lot of people think that's enough. Uh, whereas you can see in Denmark, it's yeah. it's the Israel situation. Yeah. It's too small to yeah. really yeah. carry. Uh, and we saw Podio, for instance, who made an exit yeah, to, yeah, yeah. to Citrix. Martin, yeah. yeah. Um, so, so I think it's it's like a bit which, about which, which size. A, which again, 
Holy cow, that was an gorgeously designed product. Yeah, yeah. One of the best designed products I've seen in a long, yeah, long time. Yeah, yeah. Thomas, I'm sorry. Yeah. Who I love, by the yeah. way. Um, that, that is, I, he showed it to me. I was on the early alpha invite on yeah. the audio. Um, if every product was designed that well, mm -hmm. they, they would all get acquired. Just, yeah. Uh, it's, yeah. They're so well done. So do you see any specific trends in, in um, investment and inquiring right now? Uh, is it business to business, business to consumer? Is there, yeah, it's a, it's, it is a B2B is becoming, because, and Mark Andreessen is being very vocal about that. It's like, I think investors are starting to realize that the steadiness of B2B yeah. is not as fickle. Um, it's not as sexy. Yeah. It doesn't have the brand, the brand names don't, you know, ring out like Instagram and everything because, you know, your aunt and uncle aren't using it. But um, I think B2B is where where it's starting to head. Yeah. And, and well done B2B. And, and B, as a subsection of that, I would say retail. Mm. Like the innovation within retail is kind mm. of phenomenal right now. Mm. Square being an example yeah. where they're really trying to revolutionize for the first time. You know, and, and it feels like this is a Pandora's box that Groupon yeah. opened. Yeah. That for the longest time, investors wouldn't touch any innovation for mm -hmm. retail because retail just wouldn't absorb it. Yeah. You know, and Groupon showed that retail is hungry for technology, mm -hmm. and Square is really cracking that market. Mm -hmm. And now they've brought on you know everybody and their brother yeah. is trying to get into that. Um, and the, and the merchant reward systems, and it seems like every day of their week there's a new uh, reward loyalty program, you know, system out there. So if, yeah, it's, it's those more B2B that happen to touch the C at some point, because it's retail. But um, I, I feel like that's sort of the, the new... Yeah, we have, have two great startups from Sweden there. Yeah. I settle, which is the European version of, of uh, Square, you can okay. say. Um, but they have more security on their solution because that's needed in Europe uh, by, by legal uh, requirements uh, and also RAP uh, yeah with which, a W yeah I've heard of it yeah uh, which is uh, started by uh, the founder of Reptel and yeah. the CTO of Spotify yeah. which is uh, they actually la launched and in backed by Atomico as well Yes. Yeah. Yes. That's a great team. And, there. and actually, they've already been. They haven't even proven their business model. They've they already been copied by the some of our brothers in ah, Germany. Oh my goodness. <laughs> oh. Yeah. You, you know their reputation on our show, but. Yes. Yeah. Holy cow, Germany! Yeah. yeah. I mean, we're trying to rally the German community to like, you know, play a little more with an international perspective. Yeah. You know. Um, but I think also like Germany. I mean, it's a huge market. It's 80 yeah. million people there. Right. That's uh, why they can do those. Yeah. It, it's unfortunately a big enough market where they can sit and take the best of the mm -hmm. ideas globally and just iterate them locally. Yeah. And because it takes forever for non-German companies to enter the German market, yeah. they you know it's it's a unique thing. But truthfully, like when you watch the show, we had Germany on the show, we had mm -hmm. Berlin on the show. There's some really great things coming yeah. out of there, yeah. and they almost beat London in that. Uh, I mean, it was. Neck and neck. Yeah, and I mean Berlin has has the the benefit of being very cheap to live in. Yes, and and uh, very cheap to start a company yes. in. Yes. yes. Well, matter of fact, the some of the folks I met here this week, um, you'll know them better than me. Um, they're down in Berlin, literally after we met, uh, yeah. and they a lot of the the people in the community here are like running down there. Yeah. Right, so. Hope, I mean, in some sense that's cool, but I'd love to, in, in a weird way, Swedish startup folks are in a large part responsible for a lot of the buzz in Berlin. Yeah. Berlin. Yeah. It's like, you, you guys got to hold that on for yourself, <laughs> you know? So, I, so when, when, when are you bringing the launch show to Europe? Oh, right. I'm, well, that would, that, I think that would be another kind of part of the equation. Yeah. Like I said, that recipe is, you know, having... A, a good monthly meetup mm -hmm. um, that's real steady and solid and bringing in outside people into the ecosystem, which I'd love to see that happen here. And then the other one is a big annual sort launch-like event, mm -hmm. which um, 
Yeah, it could also happen here. By golly, we'd have to do it more. Maybe we couldn't do it in the summer. People would be too distracted. Maybe we need to do it in the winter. But um, I would love to see that happen here. Yeah. So great to talk to Likewise. you. I know you have Thanks, to run Annika. soon. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and uh, we hope to see more of Tyler Craig yeah, Crowley in yeah. Stockholm. Thank Me you. Too. <laughs> Bye bye. Bye.